taking advantage of the slow music period that we're in at the moment for January and just focusing on albums that I genuinely really love for the Undiscovered Gems series, which I hope you guys are still enjoying and I do plan to do more of these throughout the course of 2021. The last one I did wasn't too long ago, but I thought may as well just keep it rolling, keep talking about some great music that you guys should be laying your ears onto. And here we are, that's where I've landed at, with Chloe Pelgag. A name you may recognize from last year, she did drop an album. I did also review it and it even got some attention from The Needle Drop, who is obviously, you know, the biggest music critic out there. So any kind of undiscovered, lesser known name getting attention through him is uh, really uh, a big deal. But what I said in my review and what I still stand by as my, you know, own opinion that I believe in, whatever the fuck that just meant, uh, is that uh, this album was in fact better than the 2021 and uh, it's, it's her overall best album too. I enjoyed the most recent one, it just didn't quite uh, enamour me as much as I wanted it to. There were some moments musically that just weren't as beautiful as this album. I just feel like everything on this album is placed perfectly. The vocal performances are to die for throughout and the instrumentals just exuberate the most perfect essence that, you know, chamber pop can possibly give you. Truly chamber pop at its finest. This is the top of the, the, the top of all tiers, the creme de la creme of what you're going to find in this genre easily. She has a lot of character to her voice, the instrumentals are often pretty playful, and even when they're not exactly, you know, playful, they are incredibly elegant and gorgeous, and they just swell in beautiful ways. The opening track combines both of those worlds, where she is just delivering such a great vocal performance, and then those little cheeky horns start coming through in the middle of the track, and it just adds this nice character to the song and just separates her from other artists because I feel like her influences coming from French pop and other genres from you know the French world of music just adds this nice little flair to her music that I don't think you know many other chamber pop artists from perhaps America for example would even dream of achieving with their music. That's why I've always felt there's a little bit of laziness amongst music listeners in the sense that they tend to only expose themselves to their own culture and yet don't really try anything from other cultures. But when you lay your ears onto something like this, it really opens up your eyes because, you know, I'm from the UK and I can tell you something, there is no artist in the UK that would even come close to making songs like this or an album that has this aesthetic because it's very much indebted to France and that's why I just implore people to, to, to just try other genres of music, to try other countries because this series is filled with uh, artists that aren't from the UK or America and uh, some of the best music I've heard. So yeah, I, I just think it's a shame that music listeners do stuff like that. It's a double-edged sword though, because I will say that when I hear other artists attempt similar sounds or similar genres, I am a little underwhelmed. I mean, literally yesterday, I did a track reaction to Lana Del Rey. And yeah, I think she's always had a bit of a chamber pop influence to her music. And yeah, I don't think that track or most of her songs are as good as anything on this. I'm not trying to throw her on the bus, under the bus or anything like that, or just compare two artists for the sake of it. I guess I'm just trying to prop Chloe Pelgag up here by saying that what she does with her sound is pretty rare to find and some of the biggest names that you might know from certain genres uh, often don't really come close to uh, this album. Track 3 uh, has this classy elegance to it, the production is absolutely stellar on this one, her vocal charm comes through once again, it's just uh, produced to perfection and then of course you've got the cute vocals that she delivers with the really lovely little vocal melodies that she brings through and man it's just such a match made in heaven like it's such a heavenly sound because it's catchy and yeah it sounds fantastic as well. Track 4 easily has one of my favorite vocal melodies on here obviously I don't know the language of French so I'm not even going to attempt to sing 
what she does, but there's that little thing where she does God damn that part is so good. Oh my god, I get stuck in my head for This is like the one track you gotta listen to, I think, if you're gonna listen to anything from the album. Like, you know, if you wanna just try maybe a couple of tracks, make it this one. Track number four. Am I going to attempt to pronounce it? No, I'm not. I love how there's a bit of diversity amongst this album too. I mean, you've got track five, which is way more extravagant and over the top. It really sounds like it's coming from like some kind of theatre production. Like you could imagine hearing a track like this in a musical, like a like a like a Broadway musical or something like that, or even a film. You know, when you know films turn musicals into into a film. You know, Cats, uh, the, the 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 wonder of Cats. Maybe this would make that film. I've said already how this album is chamber pop at its finest, but if there's one track that encapsulates that, it is Incendi. Track number six. Wow, just absolutely wonderful. This track is so, so, so beautiful. The track Insomni though is kind of completely different in the way that it's way more elusive and strange and mysterious. Like I've already said, there's a bit of diversity to some of these tracks on this album and this one track stands out to me because there's something in the production that just sounds really odd and weird compared to most of the other tracks and I love it for that. The closing track too is just like this really really long ambient piece. It just makes you feel like you're sat pondering something and um, it makes me wonder as well if she would ever go in this direction for a whole album because this is way off kilter compared to everything else. It's not one of my favourite tracks by any means but I just appreciate the fact that she even attempted this for a closing track. It's pretty brave and bold. But this album just has so many godly moments in the way that she just has these little vocal riffs and she's kind of just doing you know, playful little melodies with her voice. She's singing most of the time, but every now and then she just throws in something that's just so cute, man. And uh, it just puts a smile on my face. The whole album really does that for me. Uh, in similar ways to something like Natalia Lafourcade would do, which is interesting how, again, she's an artist of a completely different culture. And, um, you know, it, the language barrier is never an issue. Uh, you just can still attach yourself to music regardless if, of whether you understand what the singer is saying. I guess I may as well wrap things up by mentioning the track Jurive Unretard. I think I checked this up and I think it means arriving late or not being on time or something like that. And uh, I, I feel like this track is really, really reminiscent of someone like Julia Halter. So if there's anything, you know, that will sell this album to you as a viewer, I feel like mentioning her name would surely do that because if you're like me, you would highly regard Julia Halter in, in modern music and, you know, put her on a pedestal of being one of the best artists around right now. And uh, yeah, so if you're anything like me and you think that, then this album, listen to it. Just just listen to it. I, I'll say anything to make you listen to it. But I will not, what I will not do is lie. And I am not lying here. I do think this album is pretty fantastic. So hopefully you check it out and you love it as much as I do. And if you don't like it that much, let me know as well. That'd be great. I'd love to hear your thoughts. If there are any other albums like this that you want to tell me about in the comments, would love that too. And uh, hopefully you get a good album recommendation here. And uh, that, that's really all this series is about. So thank you for watching this video here. Do hope you have a good day. Do hope you subscribe if you haven't already too. And goodbye. Goodbye.